Thank you, Greg. This is so exciting. A whole session on dermatology. We have arrived at HENS. I gave my first presentation at HENS, I think, in 1998. A little bit. Also on teledermatology. So I'm talking about um, the skin disease recognition tool. Figure out how this works next. That one, maybe? The green one. That's too big. I couldn't notice that one. That's a pointer. Got it. Usual conflicts. Um, so some of you may be familiar with Dermnet New Zealand. It's a website that I started in 1995, originally for the New Zealand Dermatological Society. Now it's an independent charitable trust. What we do at Dermnet is we provide information about skin diseases. So uh, we entered the Clinician's Challenge last year. Because Dermnet is an established leader in the world of dermatology, but we've also got hundreds of thousands of clinical images, not all on display online. And uh, we had this image that use, using artificial intelligence, and we were thinking in terms of machine learning at that stage, that we would aim to develop an image recognition tool to help clinicians diagnose skin diseases. And uh, so that was our front page last year. And we won. So that, was, that meant we got invited back this year to tell you what we've done with uh, uh, our prize. Although, in fact, the ministry said we didn't need to give a presentation if we didn't want to, but here I am. So the imagination was that a photo would be taken by a clinician, uploaded to an app. It would uh, go through um, a, a deep uh, learning uh, neural network and results would be displayed for the clinician from our uh, database showing images that looked somewhat similar. So our focus has been actually on skin lesions because our original dermatology uh, idea was a bit ambitious because we got more than 3,000 diagnoses. But if you just look at skin lesions, 95% of them can be classified within one of eight diagnostic groups. And lesions are particularly difficult for the non-expert to diagnose. And as you've already heard, skin cancer is a huge problem in New Zealand. With many melanomas, many melanomas in situ, many benign lesions excised to exclude melanoma, and, and, and 300 or so deaths each year from the disease. So the skin lesions that I'm referring to are the cancers, melanoma, basal cell carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, and squamous cell carcinoma in situ slash actinic keratosis. We lump those together for the machine learning purposes. That's according to ISIC. You've already heard about ISIC. And benign classification of benign nevus, which is melanocytic equivalent, sorry, the benign equivalent of the melanoma. And scaly spots, seborrheic keratosis, solar lentigo like and planus like keratosis viral wart, which we're lumped together and called benign keratosis, dermatofibroma and various vascular lesions. So melanoma is difficult to diagnose clinically, but it's also difficult to diagnose pathologically. There are very few dermatologists who are the experts in this diagnosis. So many patients with suspected melanoma are seen by non-dermatologists, particularly in primary care, uh, and uh, the default is I don't know, let's cut it out and find out. And we don't know what the number needed to treat is. It might be 100 benign lesions in some people's hands. But we don't want to miss a melanoma. And so the idea would be that a diagnostic computer algorithm could screen out benign lesions, leading to a reduction in number needed to treat. So the human experts were what needed for a patient history. Actually, it's helpful to know the, the risk factors for melanoma. I'm much more likely to diagnose a, a melanoma in you because you are older and white-skinned compared with young, not white-skinned. We are interested in the patient history and the lesion history. What part of the body is this spot on? A, a, a lesion on the head looks quite different from one on the foot. And how long has it been present and how does it behave? When we look at it with the human eye, we notice size, color, shape, symmetry of color structure, bleeding, ulceration, and then we use a little tool called a dermatoscope for pattern analysis and local microscopic features. So this is an example of three sets of images. Uh, these come from MOLMAP, so uh, we're talking about an overview picture, a close-up picture, and a dermatoscopic picture. 
So here's a nevus. Easy to determine that it's benign because of its uniform features, symmetry. This is a melanoma. It's larger, it's irregular in shape and color, and the dermatoscopic features are chaotic. So as we've already heard, the literature really became, became interesting in February 2017 with this uh, publication that suggested their algorithm with their images was as good as a human dermatologist. That sounded very exciting, but we have to remember that uh, the collection of images was quite small. It was only 125,000 images. So we got excited and thought, this is something interesting. Let's look into it. Let's process some images. Let's make some friends around the world. Uh, and uh, we have, in fact, supplied images to third parties for their research. So background research, machine learning, and dermatology, those two, there are actually only 79 papers on PubMed with that uh, combination. So that's unreadable. So here we were, we, we're looking at convolutional neural networks trained with dermatoscopic images are able to diagnose pigmented lesions with the same accuracy as human experts. So that's just published last month. Uh, uh, and I was, to a small extent, involved with that study. So here we're learning about we need more information. The image on its own is not sufficient. We actually do need a history, such as how old is this patient and what site is the lesion on. And we need far more images. We've heard that MOLMAP has millions of images. They're very lucky. So there's been some more good uh, papers worth reading. The HAM 10,000 data set is a, a source of, it says a large collection. Well, it's only 10,000. Multi-source, well, it's only two sources, actually. It's from uh, a GP surgery in Queensland and from the University of Vienna for their training set anyway. Their testing set has got a, a wider range of images and is interesting because the te testing set has shown that the training set is only good on images from the two training institutions. And as soon as you give it my images, it doesn't know what to do. So healthcare disparities, is machine learning actually going to be, make, uh, improve equity so that everybody here in New Zealand or anywhere they reside in the world are uh, going to be given access to what will be a cheap way of um, diagnostic support or not. If you've got dark skin, what use is a machine learning program trained on white skin? Almost none. So we need to produce pictures of color as well. So machine classification of lesions you can have a decision-making algorithm, like, shall we cut this out or leave it alone? Is it benign or is it malignant? Or we could have a diagnostic algorithm when we say this is a melanoma and this is a vascular lesion. Both those systems need training sets and testing sets of images. High volume, high quality data. So these are some public data sets of images. But they're only dermatoscopic images, and there's far too few of them. There are very few benign lesions because nobody takes a photograph of a benign lesion. There are very few non-pigmented lesions because the focus of dermatoscopy has been on pigmented lesions until recently. And there's very few images in non-white skin because non-white skin is not thought to be at risk of skin cancer. And indeed, the, the frequency of skin cancer in non-white skin is very low comparatively. And the sets are only of these lesions. They don't include inflammatory lesions. So, for example, a patch of eczema might be confused with a basal cell carcinoma very easily. And yet the image sets don't include these. Um, so the, the other problem with the data sets that exist so far is that they either have no labels or they're inaccurate. Now, that may not matter if you've got millions and millions of images, but short, smaller sets, it certainly matters. You need to exclude multiple diagnoses in one picture or multiple possibilities. We need to know exactly what this spot is. We should exclude uncertainties, but 
most lesions, of course, are uncertain. So if we're excluding uncertainties, we're missing out on stuff. Inconsistent terminology. We need to know age, gender, ethnicity, body site, and how sun damage that patient is. Histopathology is no more accurate than clinical diagnosis, and probably 5 to 10% of the histopathological, so-called gold standard diagnosis, is wrong. And if we have to have pathology results, we're not going to have benign lesions in there. So um, we have clinical images that are scanned transparencies from digital SLRs, from compact cameras and mobile devices. We have regional overviews, close-ups, and polarized and non-polarized demoscopy. We have not included confocal microscopy, histopathology, or inflammatory lesions yet. They'll come. So uh, we don't know how many images we've got because many of them are duplicates or non-clinical. The sources of our images, uh, the largest source is Waikato District Health Board, of which the largest source in there of skin lesions is the Virtual Lesion Clinic, and these images are captured by MoMAP New Zealand. We also have an e-triage system. You're going to hear about that next. And we are collecting images at a, a rate of 1,000 a month through our e-triage system. And we're going to be able to use those for this research as well. And we're hoping to be able to capture all the history information uh, and pop that onto the, the images. And there's some other contributors. Legal stuff. We need to worry who owns these images. Have the patients consented to the use of this kind? Uh, is it private, secure, and de-identified? We have a technician now housed at Waikato Hospital de-identifying and tagging new images. So it's an interesting partnership and collaboration. To, to, to do the paperwork, we had to register the research with the Waikato District Health Board Research Office. We had to do the Maori consultation, and the interesting impact of that was that going forward, all our images will be tagged with ethnicity data. Uh, and we did an um, HDEC application, um, which is easy because as long as we're using de-identified images, uh, there's no issues. So we have a consent form at the hospital. There's a consent sent form for education publication and now research. Uh, the virtual lesion clinic patients all undergo the MOMAP re uh, consent that is now electronic, but the virtual lesion cases it's still paper-based, but our patients are consenting to the use of data for research. Um, we need to make sure that our patients are not identifiable. This is an agreement we have with Waikato Hospital uh, stating that we will de-identify. It's not that easy. We have to remove the patient identification numbers from metadata and file names. We have to remove any patients where tattoos are in the way, clothing that could be recognized, or jewelry, facial features need to be cropped to remove them. And we have to remove uh, the consent forms and identifiable images. So the data set soon is getting a bit smaller. The virtual lesion clinic data set is beautiful. Uh, we have to make sure that people supplying us from images from elsewhere have um, they're usually not dermatologists, so we do require histopathological confirmation. And that the provider's got that consent and has removed the data, otherwise we have to do it for them. So we remove the overview images, we, we remove the consent forms, uh, we try and identify which is a macro image, which is a dermatoscopy image. It isn't always that easy. And we actually have to identify which is polarized and which is non-polarized dermoscopy. So we're setting sets of macro images, dermoscopy images, macro plus dermoscopy images. Lesion factors, camera factors, photographer factors, distance of the lens from the subject, flash or no flash, image type, quality and size, and what does the metadata say? So here's a beautiful image, a single lesion in the center, well focused and exposed and no extraneous data. How about this one? It's out of focus, poorly exposed, lesion is a little bit eccentric, it's rather large, there's blood or ulceration or scale or ink or background clutter. Do we include it or not? Do we include the rulers? Do we include the background? Or the hair? All things to think about. Should we edit images? So if they're poor quality, we'll take them out. But if they're only a little bit bad, maybe we should include those because the machine needs to be able to deal with only a little bit bad images. Shall we remove the border? Uh, should we use enhancement for contrast and color exposure in hue? Uh, and what do we do about the garments and jewellery and tattoos? We have to cut them out. 
and we have to label whether there's a ruler in the picture or ink in the picture. Otherwise, <laughs> the computer may say, well, all those images with rulers are melanomas because nobody puts a ruler by a benign lesion. So then we tag it. We tag it by removing tags and adding tags. Um, diagnostic tags. We're just sitting with the seven or eight uh, categories at the moment. Dermnet has a Bible of categories and synonyms. We're going to add all these synonyms and categories and subcategories and ICD-10, ICD-11 and SNOMED CT codes to the images in case they become necessary later. We think they will. We've got to remove duplicates. We've got to remove non-clinical images. We've got to uh, automatically tag, and mainly we've been making friends with the AI community in dermatology throughout the world, but particularly New Zealand, Australia, Canada, United Kingdom, United States, and Austria. Uh, we have provided some of our images to third parties for their research. There's are variation in approach. So one of our uh, third parties says, guess anything you give us, that's fine. We'll have cancers, benign, inflammatory. Just, we just want images. Give us images. The next one says, only perfect, only polarized. Don't want those unpolarized images. And the lesion must be in the middle of the field. Somebody else says, no, 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 we don't want any dermoscopy because that's not real life. In, in our center in Scotland, nobody has a dermatoscope. We need just normal close-up images, please. And by the way, you can have bad ones as well as good ones. One group says, we don't want anything less than 1,000 images in each category. The next one says, well, 100 will be enough. Funding. Well, we don't have much funding, but we're working on that. Plans for 2019, we're going to expand and consolidate our image collection. We're going to automatic, automatically tag new images. Uh, we're going to do something in machine learning research, not quite sure what. We're going to compare our results with dermatologists and perhaps develop a decision support. And I'm so sorry if I've gone behind time. Thank you.